हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल सर यस मैडम हेलो यस मैडम हेलो यस मैडम प्लीज ओके ओके yes i think das sir is calling for the uh, for the start uh, starting the session i will start the session yes madam welcome all the i welcome all the participants who has joined for the learning this workshop nandi nagari workshop and which is arranged by the siddham institute which is Uh, situated in Varanasi, and uh, it is meant for Indic and uh, intercultural studies. And Siddham has arranged various workshops to learn for teaching and learning the various ancient scripts. And uh, since one and half year, uh, Siddham has arranged so many scripts. Uh, Siddham has uh, arranged. so many workshops to learning various scripts like brahmi nevari sharada granth nagari like that and siddham has also arranged uh, one manuscript uh, decoding workshop also for uh, ayurveda manuscripts it is for ayurved doctors as uh, i am dr ila bhor i am uh, ayurved md ayurved doctor so uh, we have uh, very much thankful to siddham family and now we are become a family of siddham and i welcome all the participants that siddham has given us a great opportunity to learning these ancient scripts so that we can further uh, work on it so i welcome all the participant again Uh, to start uh, with this nandi nagari workshop i think there are some uh, old, uh, some old participants also which which have participated in all these workshops like bakshi sir and we have us with us our great teacher who is going to teach uh, the nandi nagari script and all basics of this script Uh, dr anirban das sir i also welcome dr das sir dr das has a great teacher and uh, he is having various ancient scripts and very very much uh, a great teacher i have no words so he has taught so many scripts he has worked internationally also to teach all these uh, like indo tibetian and uh, other uh, in other fields and other scripts and sanskrit language also he is a great teacher i welcome dr das sir and uh, i welcome all participants and uh, i request all the participants to uh, introduce themselves each one by one with their name uh, their place and uh, their area of working research area of interesting uh, interested in research so please uh, we will start with um, first i think aniruddha bakshi sir can we start with you sir okay sir. okay madam thank you um <coughs> myself aniruddha bakshi and i am uh, serving as an assistant professor in sanskrit and my special paper is indian epigraphy and paleography and from last two years <clears throat> uh, siddham has uh, has conducted so many workshop on in uh, indian ancient scripts as well as uh, on the ayurveda chanda etc 
and I have participated so many workshop on Indian scripts and I have learned a lot from Anirbandha sir, uh, Uttam sir ji. Thank you. Okay, thank you sir. Next, Chandan Kumar sir. Hello. Haan, I can speak Hindi. Haan, yes, please sir. जी मैम मेरा नाम चंदन कुमार है मैं काशी हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय से अभी शोधरत हूँ मेरा शोध विषय है नागरी लिपि का एक विकास एक अध्ययन मैं अब टेन टाइम में बीएचयू में ही थैंक यू मैम ओके दोस हु कैन टॉक इन इंग्लिश दे आई रिक्वेस्ट uh, all the participants to speak in English as we have uh, some uh, uh, participants out of India also. So uh, they can get what we want to say. So uh, I request uh, another Deepali Shaw. Madam. Uh, thank you, ma'am. My name is Deepali Shaw and I'm from Kolkata. I'm an assistant professor in Sanskrit. My research interest is in Bharatiya Darshan, mainly Yoga Darshan. But uh, recent, in recent times, uh, one of my seniors introduced me to this Siddham course and that piqued my interest. So I'm joining this course. Thank you. Okay, thank you, madam. Next one. Uh, Dimitri Ramazano. Please. Uh, yes, good evening. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, good evening. My name is Dimitri. I'm originally from Russia, but I've been living in China for over 20 years. I majored in East um, Asian Studies, um, St. Petersburg State University and Beijing Language University. So my main point of interest is <laughs> Sinitic studies. But at the same time, I've been studying Buddhism for I think around 20 years as well. And you understand that this is quite hard to do without um, understanding Sanskrit. So for the past year and a half, I've been a study, uh, student of Sanskrit of a Moscow based organization Sanskritarium. I think like a lot of Russians here. And I saw that they promoted this uh, interesting course. So that's why this workshop, that's why I joined. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Then Siddham will be the uh, uh, best uh, opportunity for you, sir, to learn such ancient Indic scripts. Next, uh, Dr. Dolly Jain. Uh, namaste, ma'am. I'm Dr. Dolly Jain, Associate Professor in University of Rajasthan. Uh, uh, I'm interested in uh, lipis, so I attended this course. <laughs> And uh, I am doing a course from Tirupati, in which Nandi Nagri is also in syllabus. So I lost those classes th on that time. So I am attending this course. Thank you. Okay. And uh, then next one, Akshita Damaniya, madam. I have uh, done a few courses earlier also with Siddham. I am interested into manuscript studying uh, and uh, uh, historically how the I mean history of behind manuscripts. Uh, so I think Siddham is the best place to you know explore such stuff. And hence I've registered in both this course. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Uh, next one, uh, Irina. Irina, please. And maybe for some of our participants, it's uh, a little bit difficult to uh, speak English, uh, but uh, they will try uh, to repeat uh, what our dear Anirbanji will write, uh, because they know the Vanagri script, and that will be easier. I am uh, Yulia, 
uh, I was uh, on workshops uh, of uh, Sidham uh, during uh, Brahmis, uh, for Brahmi script, for uh, Sinhala script. Uh, and uh, of course, we are very interested in, uh, in every course which is proposed by Sidham University. Uh, so, uh, uh, waiting for study. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Das will teach everything to us, definitely. Next one, Maria. Hello, my name is Maria Starchenka. I'm uh, from Russia, Moscow. I'm a yoga teacher and I'm interested in, uh, in uh, Sanskrit. And I, I will, uh, once uh, I, I listen already uh, the program of Sidham University, Chandam, uh, half year ago. Uh, so my, my field of interest is uh, different kind of Indian culture, Sanskrit, Indian mm -hmm. languages. That's it, thank you. Yes, then Siddham is the best platform for you, madam. Next one, Prasanna. Uh, yes, uh, myself, Prasanna Shikre. I'm a course instructor of ancient Indian scripts in Mumbai. And I'm interested in learning new script. I'm a professional Modi translator. So I'm interested in uh, family of uh, Brahmi script. So that's why I'm learning this Nandinagari. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Next one, Rupali, Rupali Mukashi. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rupali Mukashi from uh, Mumbai University. I'm a student of epigraphy. Uh, last two years of pandemic uh, has brought a lot of challenges to us and also opportunities, learning various scripts, uh, learning and various branches of learning. And uh, Siddham has given us a wonderful opportunity, especially Dr. Anir Anirban Dash, sir, then Padmakar Prabhuni's numismatics uh, workshop. And I'm sure that this will also be a great success and will add to our knowledge considerably. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Next one, Satish sir, Satish Akhala sir. Uh, hi, I'm Satish from Bangalore, basically a uh, software engineer. Just to explore different Indian script and explain that one, I joined it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Next one is Sergey Arkipo. Sir, please. Uh, hello, my name is Sergey. Uh, I'm from Moscow, Russia. Uh, my main interest is Sanskrit and all related. Um, uh, and I'm especially fond of fancy and scripts. Uh, uh, so I'm very happy to participate in this new workshop. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Next one, Tatiana. Uh, Tatiana has uh, also some difficulties with uh, with English, but uh, she also studies uh, in Sanskritorium. Uh, uh, she is interested in, interested in Sanskrit, uh, and we are six from Russia. Thank you. Okay. Next, Usha, madam. Uh, good evening and thank you, ma'am. I am uh, Usha Devi. I am doing a uh, MA in uh, Manuscriptology from uh, Karnataka Sanskrit University, Bangalore. I had an uh, initial introduction about this particular script. I thought I will improve on this. Last time I attended uh, Siddham class uh, for Sharada script. Uh, they are doing a wonderful job. Uh, thanks, Siddham. And that's uh, Thank you, madam. Yes, madam. With all these workshops, we all have uh, our became no family of Siddham, definitely. Uh, next, I think Isabella, Isabella Makas. Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Isabel Magaf, but in Sanskrit, it will be Dharma Dari. 
And um, I'm a student of Sanskrit of Professor Anirvan Dash. And I went to the previous workshop on Rami script and I am addicted to Sidam now because these workshops are too wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Uh, may I know who is remaining? If all participants have given their introduction, then I request Dr. Anirban Das sir to introduce uh, today's workshop and to say about this workshop. Das sir, please. Uh, thank you. Sabiko uh, Namaskar. Uh, so, Namo uh, Namaha. I would. Uh, uh, I would uh, begin with uh, one uh, Mangala Charana. So, Guru Reva Gatihi, Guru Meva Vaje, Guru Naiva Sahasmi, Namagurave, Naguru Ho Paramam, Sisurasmi Guru Ho, Matirastu Guru, Mamapahi Guru. My Guru, indeed, in my path. I take resort to my Guru. I am always with my Guru. I bow down to my Guru. There is nothing higher than a Guru. I am a child of my Guru. My mind is merged in my Guru. Oh Guru, protect me. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ilabhor Ji and uh, Dr. Barik and Vakchi Ji and all the participants. Uh, those who have joined uh, this course. And uh, today uh, I just want to uh, tell you how we uh, proceed uh, with this course. Uh, first of all, today we have introduction. Uh, there will be a short introduction. And uh, then we'll have to learn or practice the alphabets like the vowels, consonants, and their combination with the vowels and the combination of consonant and consonant and vowels like conjunct clusters and some paleographic aspects of the script Nandinagari. And then some manuscripts, there is a possibility manuscripts and inscriptions to decipher or to transcript. So this is the course of nine days. And uh, today is the first day. So again, I welcome you all. <coughs> And we have to practice more and more. And uh, there are some manuscripts, still unpublished manuscripts, are there in different uh, repository uh, on Nandi Nagari. So I hope there will be opportunity after learning to get some uh, kind of manuscripts and uh, uh, do some research work. So in this way, I would like to start this uh, uh, presentation of my introduction. So I would like to share uh, the PPT so that we can have the PPT maybe from here. Hope you can all see the PPT. <coughs> and the lecture, actually what exactly I'm going to arrange the lecture, there will be a 20 minutes uh, presentation and 10 minutes break with the question answer. And again, 20 minutes, even though now we have already completed 20 minutes. So it is the time of the discussion, but I will start my lecture. And this will follow, uh, follow uh, the whole uh, workshop. 20 minutes presentation, 10 minute discussions. So <clears throat> uh, I came to know that there are participants from different countries. So, and uh, uh, the course will be in English. Uh, and uh, sometimes maybe I speak in Hindi uh, as per uh, the convenience of the audience or the participants. So <laughs> the paleography of uh, Indic scripts is very vast that you all of you know. It is not actually easy work and it's very dry. 
paleography work and reading manuscripts uh, deciphering the inscriptions it is a very dry work and the paleography the term itself having two words like paleo and graphy so paleo means old uh, sign and symbols and graphy is a scientific study so when you do uh, the scientific study of the old sign and symbols that is called paleography and as i told you that uh, the script is uh, indian paleography is very vast and varied and most of the scholars uh, agree that the history of writing in ancient india uh, begins with the ashokan brahmi uh, script so and it is considered also the mother of all uh, scripts of indian subcontinent and also uh, south east asia uh, but on other hand we have ample literal evidences from pre ashokan period indicates that that was uh, actually uh, indicates that that some kind of writing system existed in ancient india we have some literal evidences but what about the literal evidences because we are only in the textbook but the writing materials including the tools and the surface have been fallen victim of the ravages of the time mean that no longer exist so it is very difficult for us to exactly give a scientific proof about the when we started writing in india ancient india definitely uh, we have uh, seen uh, the ashokan inscriptions in this context there is a statement of samrat ashok and the statement actually is talking about the writing materials because the writing materials were used during the uh, period of ashok it was not durable so therefore he instructed all his uh, followers or the scribes to write his edict of dhamma that he calls in every inscriptions em dhamma lipi on the stone and even uh, asok selected the stone to write and his statement as follows i can uh, show you the statement maybe uh, okay this is the statement see let the stone pillars be prepared later oh, hello sir uh, the slide is not visible is not visible uh, no we can only see the map of uh, south india i think you you have to share screen entire screen not no uh, 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 no i already uh, share the screen now are you able to see just scroll it down uh. oh, yes sir are, are you able to see now oh, yes sir now are you yes sir okay. yes sir Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Are you able to see or not? Yes, we are able. To. Okay. So now, uh, yes, and now come to this uh, statement of uh, Samrat also, uh, just to analyze how he selected, or why he selected the stone. Let the stone pillars be prepared, and let this edict of Dhamma, the religion, be. and graven they are on that may be endure to the remotest ages it means it is very clear that the writing materials were used during the time of ashok it was not durable and we are very lucky to have this all the inscriptions because it is on the stone so as i told you that we have uh, many evidences uh, literal evidences uh, because i have already given uh, so many uh, in uh, references and informations in different talks so today i have decided not to uh, go through all the references our main focus is nandi nagari and uh, if you would like to have all these informations we have some uh, talks already uploaded in siddham's uh, youtube channel 
uh, that can you can have view and see what exactly i wanted to say about all this uh, literary evidences so <clears throat> even though there are uh, literary ev uh, evidences suggest uh, the existence of uh, pre ashokan writing system the lack of hard evidences in the form of manuscripts or inscriptions make it impossible to verify the suggestions okay if any writing system did exist in vedic or pre vedic uh, times it has not come down to us it is very clear from the statement of also because the material was not durable so <clears throat> asokan writing system the name is uh, brahmi even though this name is given by this european scholars in a very later period like 100 years back so without uh, discussing about the name we just begin that is the brahmi but in asokan inscriptions always it is said em dhamma lipi so what is the meaning of lipi it should be clear from the standpoint of view what is the meaning of lipi so lipi as inscription or lipi as a writing system or writing tool or writing uh, ideas so anyway so we can go through the development of uh, brahmi first uh, because in this connection we can see uh, the nandinagari the position of nandinagari and the connection of nandinagari how it is related to other indic scripts and uh, <clears throat> so when you look at the development of brahmi script there are four stages but we can make more than four stages so i can just made both So you can see uh, the four stages may be the proto brahmi script which was before uh, ashok definitely there was some writing system before ashok and ashok selected uh, that script and the language to produce the inscriptions because he has taken uh, the script existing script in his time in his period and also the language and he was very clever he targeted uh, actually for the common people so he has selected the language of the common people that is the prakrit even though there are various type of prakrits there is magadi ardhamagadi paisachi sauraseni maharashtri prakrit many types of prakrit but he selected prakrit not the sanskrit and also he selected the script that is very common script and he selected the place also where to have these inscriptions so that common people can see and the common people can understand actually it is a challenging work for a king we can imagine now how he has done this very tremendously and very effectively still all these inscriptions are available in the respective places east west north south and the pillar edict also because i am in sarnath nearby we have a sarnath pillar edict so when we talking about this development this pre mauryan brahmi script and this mauryan brahmi and the post mauryan brahmi and definitely this nandinagar is post mauryan brahmi a very later period around 10th century that we will discuss in our next slides so when you look at this uh, shunga period and the brahmi structure has changed this is very simple even though we know uh, no uh, the english alphabet if we all will write definitely all the writing the core a or we are writing it to a so core a will be there but the writing system will be different so time to time that in the phases the scripts has given a new shape by the scribes uh, because of the writing materials i think tools and uh, interest of the scribe if it is a very uh, calligraphic uh, stylist uh, scribe we can a very stylish uh, scripts if you look at the pallava scripts that are very very beautiful and also ranjana scripts from nepal it's very very beautiful uh, so depends on the time period tools and the interest of the scribe so it has gradually we can see the development of the script and uh, also the reason why is and then i can go to the next slide see third century bce and come to 13th century ce you can see the basic uh, development okay and here i like to explain look at here in the first uh, this ka one vertical line cross with the horizontal line 
Now there is a basic question. The vertical line is there, and then horizontal line it should be in the middle, or lower part, or upper part. Uh, sorry, Anir Banji, the uh, slides are still on the first. Oh, we see on the first. Oh, uh, why did I don't know why it is happening like this? I'm very sorry. Oh, but I'm uh, trying to start the slide. Okay. Are you sharing? No, you just share all the screen. No, I say it's okay now. Uh, it's okay, but you catch only. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, now when you touch the slide, uh, we will see it. But if you don't touch it, we okay, don't. Okay, see okay, it. okay, 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 okay. Sorry, this is a mistake. I will touch now. Okay, okay. Okay, so see, uh, uh, actually, if you look at this uh, uh, curve, so the crossing both lines, we can see different types of coin as you can inscriptions. Uh, that is not standardized, actually. Now we have the Devanagari scripts, it is standardized. Uh, but we don't have standardized font also in Devanagari scripts still. There are many different fonts. But anyway, so you can see in 200 CE, Within the 500 years, you can see there is a, on the top, there is a triangle. And this triangle actually in the latter period became the head stroke. So first the triangle, you can see the triangle and slowly, slowly the triangle became head stroke around 8th century CE. This is the development, paleographical development. Beginning, there is no, because in the head stroke, if you look at the head stroke, in Asukan uh, script, there is no head stroke. A later period, in uh, 200 CE, you can see there is a triangle. And the triangle went to both sides, spread it to both sides, left and right. And then you can, you can have the head stroke. Not only the triangle, not only the head stroke, every part, each part of the graphic has some gradual changes. You can see uh, from the chart or from the different script chart, then developments. Okay. So I can go to the next uh, slide. Can you see now the next slide? Yes. Yes. Look at here. Appearance of Brahmi, because we are going to learn Nandinagari. And when you compare with the Nandinagari and Brahmi, okay, there are around 1300 or 1400 years gap in between the Brahmi inscriptions and the Nandinagar, or 1500 years gap. If you look at the uh, Nandinagar's development, and when you look at the Brahmi script, the appearance of the Brahmi characters includes the geometric designs, like the circle, you can have the circle here, like the cross, we can have see the cross, okay? And the triangle, we can have the triangle, angular, straight, everything you can see here. Okay, so look at the different and the heights also. And if there is a conjunct, if you look at the Asukan inscriptions, if there is a conjunct, they try to uh, manage the heights of individual letter with the combination of the conjunct letters. If you look at the inscriptions, see the height of the individual letter and see the conjuncts, they are the same. It means that they are just the conjuncts and there is no head stroke. Okay. So this is the basic uh, and the Brahmi actual writing from left to right. Okay. This is the left to right writing system. And as we do in uh, Devanagari and other scripts, other Brahmi descended scripts, all are from left to right. Now, <laughs> We can see here the next uh, slide about the origin and development of Nandinagari. Look at this chart carefully. See, there is the Brahmi. Then we have two groups, North Indian group and South Indian group, broadly. And under the North Indian group, you can see Kusana. It is a period. It is a Kusana kingdom, Kusana period. And then Gupta period. Okay? So they are again subdivided. And then in Kusana period, there is the Sarada manuscript or Sarada script. And the Sarada having all this Takri, Landa, Dongri, Gurumukhi, and they have also uh, uh, 
Pabuchi, and then uh, Bhattacharya, all the variants of the Sarada. And come to this Gupta period. If you look at the Gupta, then the Siddha Matrika. Siddha Matrika actually played a very vital role because the script went to China through the Silk Route and then from China to Japan. And the Japanese has given a very good dimension or a very good thoughtful thing to the Siddha Matrika script. Still, the uh, Japanese priest, they used the Siddha Matrika symbols or the pictographs in various occasions. So, and then Siddha Matrika, then we have Nagari. See, the Nagari we are using now, it is only 300 years back, 350 years back, 17th century or 400 years back. But it is called Old Nagari. Okay. And we are using the late Nagari, old Nagari. And from the old Nagari, that is the Nandi Nagari, then late Nagari, then Assamese, Bengali, Oriya, actually all these uh, regional uh, uh, scripts can uh, develop, we can see all the regional scripts. It means actually 10th century is a very uh, interesting or uh, interesting period where we can have the development of all the original scripts. Because the starting beginning of the script and there is a development and the full flesh, the complete alphabet. It means that is the development, the real development, the complete alphabet. In the beginning, there is a mixture of different scripts. I can show you when I start to uh, teach you or practice the scripts, I can show you how we can influence the reason why is how this influence of the scripts. Uh, one single graphic, you can have the influence of North and also South, both has combined. So in this way, we can see. Now, there is another uh, chart here uh, because I am not discussing all these things on the South Indian because I will share this uh, PPT uh, just after the class through your email ID the registered email ID. And then also, I just want to go through it. You see, the North Indian group, we have Gupta. No need to talk about the Sukusana, Gupta, then the Kutila. Actually, it is a zigzag script. And Kutila is the, before the Siddham. And Kutila also, uh, the Tibetan script also developed from Kutila. So Kutila has a very uh, zigzag script as well Kutila. And then look at here this. And the Siddham and the Sarada affect also to Nandi Nagari. Because a couple of characters still remain as it is in Sarada. So there is an effect of Siddham and the Sarada effect to the Nandi Nagari. Okay. So I can show you one later so that you can have a better idea how it is developed in Nandi Nagari. So look at here. See, uh, here we have this cross this Brahmika, and this cross little bit changed, means little down to the both side, both this uh, left uh, and the right horizontal line, is both as down. And then you can see this triangle on the top, then head stroke, then Siddham, and then Sarada, and this is the Nandi Nagari. What is the interesting is this, Nandi Nagari actually, there is an individual head stroke, like little bit Sarada. Because all the uh, alphabets having the individual head stroke. But in Devanagari, we can have complete head stroke. When we write, there is a head stroke, all, instead of only dha, because dha having little head stroke. So this is the uh, basic uh, thing. We can say like here, that in the latter period, many Indic scripts developed. Uh, from mother script that is Brahmi. And between the 3rd century to 8th century C, the important among the scripts are Kusana script, as I told you, and Gupta and Kutila. If North Indian, if you go to South Indian, there is a Kadamba, there is a Batilitu, and uh, Siddham and Sarada. Other scripts are regional scripts developed. Old Bengali is there, many scripts, Maithili is there, so many scripts, Nevar is there. Many scripts are developed. Okay. 
so this is the basic information about the uh, script so i just want to uh, talk about the nagari because we are going to talk about nandi nagari so i just uh, make uh, clarify what is nagari and then we can go to nandi nagari nagari and devanagari and nandi nagari this is the steps we are going to have this presentation so nagari and its allied script it means that in the development of the script of modern indian languages especially those of the north the contribution of nagari script are quite significant because we have many many nagari old nagari uh, manuscripts nagari is developed from the kutila because there are some stages okay and the kutila actually as i told you it is a acute angle script and the kutila inscriptions in north india around 7th century represents the ancient form of nagari it is not fully developed but ancient form of nagari okay and the nagari scripts are classified there are different views i would like to quote here uh, the nagari scripts are classified in the eastern that is purva nagari eastern part of india you just visualize uh, the map of india i am talking about eastern part of india that is called purva nagari and then western part of Nag uh, in in western india that is the ardha nagari and northern india that is devanagari and the southern india that is nandi nagari see this nagari what is there and according to the reason why is uh, east west north south the name little bit changed but in the broader stage we can say northern indian that is devanagari and southern indian nandi nagari that is also we can uh, say or we can assume that there is both if it in the broader group there will only two nardan sardan nardan uh, that is the uh, devanagari sardan that is the nandinagari and now we can talk about the devanagari <clears throat> as i told you we had this uh, inscription of 7th century where you can have the impression of the beginning of the uh, old nagari or the nagari script But Devanagari, why is Devanagari? That is very important to know. Uh, okay, uh, so okay, I just three minutes to have uh, twenty minutes. Okay, so about the tenth century, the Northern Nagari became the fully developed one, and since then it was used in writing the Sanskrit, and from the period of the Gupta, the Sanskrit language became the part of the Hindu religion or Sanatan religion. So Gupta period is a golden period in Indian history. and the sanatan or the hindu people began to consider sanskrit as the sacred language it does not mean that it was not uh, before that it was but the golden period this gupta period has given a new dimension to the script wise and the language wise because in gupta period we have the pen and we have the bamboo or the paper from china uh, to write so the stylistic writing in indian epigraphy one can see it started from the gupta period both wise language wise and the script wise we are very that time we are very rich in language and script wise so <clears throat> we can say that according to when the northern uh, nagari was uh, adopted for the writing sanskrit and along with the language the script in which was written might got this uh, reference that deva is there okay So it was Devanagari. The people try to because it was used for Deva Bhasa, Sanskrit. So Deva Bhasa and Devanagari. So the language was Bhasa, Sanskrit. It was Deva Bhasa, called Deva Bhasa. And then the people add the Deva word to the Nagari. It became Devanagari. Okay. There are many kind of interpretations of Devanagari. It is one of the interpretations. And Devanagari script always uh, is used in uh, all over India to write Sanskrit. but formerly before that in tamil nadu kerala and southern karnataka sanskrit language was used uh, sanskrit language was used to write with the uh, through the granth script it means the granth script was used to write the sanskrit uh, words granth and then the nandi nagari came okay so that i am going to tell you the writing, uh, writing system of indo aryan languages and uh, without exception are either 
directly or indirectly influenced by Devanagari script. So Devanagari script is also adapted to write Hindi language today. And also Nepali also used the Devanagari. Okay. And the Marathi language also used Devanagari. So Devanagari has influenced in most of the east, west, north part, not the south. That south we have the Nandinagari, which is a sister script of uh, Devanagari. So we have some regional scripts like we have Kaithi and we have Modi in Maharashtra, we have Mahajani. So there is a relation between all these scripts, uh, which I'm going to tell you in the latter uh, presentation. So I think 20 minutes I have completed. So if you have any question, uh, you can ask me. If no, then we can go ahead. Sir, Hello, can sir. I ask you? Uh, Rupali Mukashi here. Sir, yes. I just missed out the name for the Western Nagari script. Uh, Western Nagari, Ardha Nagari. Ardha Nagari. Ardha Nagari. Purva Ardha Nagari, Nagari, Ardha Nagari, Deva Nagari, Nandinagari. Nandi 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 yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, myself, only the Vakshi. Yes, yes. Please. Uh, pranam, sir. Oh, pranam. Sir, I, I have a just a query. Uh, ah. Is there any uh, difference between uh, Nandinagari and Jain Nagari or the graphical pattern almost same between these two? Uh, yes, there is some graphical differences. Definitely. Uh, because uh, in Jain and Nagari, uh, there's head strokes are joining. And not only head strokes and the graphical changes also there. Because in Jain Nagari, we can have the vowel E is very clearly, which in Nandi Nagari is not clear, the E. Only half portion you can see in the uh, top to the uh, left side, the sorty. There are many uh, paleographical changes. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And which actually I'm going to discuss. And uh, Maybe it's a very good idea to have some comparative study about the old Nagari or Jaina Nagari or Nandi Nagari. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So now uh, we're talking about the Nandi Nagari. Why it is Nandi Nagari? Are you able to see the uh, slides? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, the Sardan, as I told you, and very clearly, the Sardan variety, the Sardan variety of the Nagari is known Nandi Nagari. It is a Brahmi based script was used in Southern India between to 8th to 19th century. But the fully development chart of Nandinagari only one can find in 10th century. But it started, the beginning period is the 8th century. Okay. And in South India, the Maharashtra also, some portion of Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh, it was used. And uh, I can go to the next slide where we can back. This, this is the area you can see. This is the Vijayanagar kingdom, the slightly green, not the yellow one. You can look at this area, which this, uh, this was the geographical area uh, for the Nandi Nagari script. And uh, look this area, it is Vijayanagar, Mysore, Kanchi, Tanjavur, and this Madurai, okay, or to Kollam. This is the area where the ancient uh, Vijayanagar kingdom, because this Vijayanagar kingdom spread it over to this area, up to this uh, Kanyakumari. Okay, so this is the area. So why it is Nandi? Just we will see Nandi. Why it is Nandi Nagari? And uh, Nandi Nagari and Devanagari relationship also we can see a little bit. See, uh, it is derived. It derives from the cultural group of Nagari script. Because Nagari script, there is a Nagari script culture, culture, or manuscript culture, or script culture. And then it is Nandi Nagari. So there are several similarities uh, between the Nandi Nagari and Deva Nagari. Okay. The structure wise, the graphic representation, and the writing style, and the conjunct uh, clusters, and also how to join the conjunct clusters about the Birama. Everything is uh, uh, related to that. Uh, that is the Devanagar. Okay. So, well, I will uh, uh, we'll practice the script. That time I will tell. 
Okay. Now come to the name. How it is Nandi Nagari? So that I want to tell you. The term Nagari is interpreted in different ways. For the some or some scholars, they believe that it is related to the Naga Lipi. See, remember, Naga Lipi is one of the script which is listed in the Lalita Vistara. The Lalita Vistara, there are 60 scripts. One is Naga Lipi. Some people, scholars, believe that, okay, this uh, Nagari with the Naga Lipi, they connect with the Naga Lipi. It is one of the 60 scripts. And another view, the writing used in the Nagaras, Nagara means city, Nagara. Nagara, it is a uh, mm. neuter gender noun, Nagara, city. So maybe it is Nagari. It means that the Nagari could be also explained as a cultured or sophisticated. Okay. And in the Lalita Vistar, there is another script. The name is Sastra Varta Lipi. You see, Nandi Nagari or Nagari, both were used to preserve the Sastras, the Titrais, the ancient knowledge, the wisdom. So people believe that this both, the, etym the etymology of Nandi Nagari may be come from there, or we can say that Nandi, you can see the Nandi here. The worship of Nandi, actually very popular in South India, especially in uh, uh, Karnataka area, okay? So it is a Karnataka state, the people uh, worship the Nandi. So Nandi is auspicious, this is bull, Nandi, okay? Maybe this Nandi might be almost parallel to the Devanagari. You see, some Devanagari, Nandi Nagari, the meaning wise may be the same, or, or we can say it is parallel to the word of Deva in Devanagari. And there is another view also. This Nandi Nagari script inscriptions is found from Kakatiya, Kakatiya rule, including there is a Mohabuabad now in uh, uh, Hyderabad. That is a Nandi Nagar. Maybe that script, because of Nandi Nagar, maybe Nandi. Okay. And if you look at the literature of the uh, Nandi Nagari script, is used for the literature. So we can see the Madhva. This is the Madhva uh, religion or Madhva philosophy they used uh, to write Nandi Nagari. Okay. But in the latter period, we can see the Vaishnavas also uh, write in uh, this uh, Nandi Nagari script. And also Saivas also write in Nandi Nagari scripts. So the Nandi Nagari script actually very used by the Saivas and Vaishnavas to produce their literature. Okay. So we can go to, are you able to see? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. So now uh, I'm talking about this varieties of Nandi Nagari characters or some paleographical aspects. Definitely whenever we uh, learn the script or we practice the script, I will tell you the paleographical aspect more and more as we proceed to the uh, next class, like tomorrow and day after tomorrow onwards. So, there is Nandi Nagari, if you look at the Nandi Nagari shape, the Nandi Nagari on the palm leaf or on the paper, mostly palm leaf, is different little bit to the inscription. It means that the monumental type preserved in the inscription and a very cursive style, which is preserved in the uh, palm leaf manuscripts. So that also we can see. And then the structure, uh, as it is structure, as I told you, the general structure, the phonetic order, or the matra, okay, use birama is like similar to Devanagari, okay, and several consonant vowel combinations and the style, as I told you, all to Devanagari. And now, very interesting thing about the head stroke that I just want to tell you look at here the head stroke. See, you can see it very clearly. Already we have discussed about the head stroke. I'm just jumping to the inscription below in the black background, you see, there is no head stroke combined, individual head stroke. An individual head stroke is there. Okay. So we can say that, look at here, the head stroke is not touching the neighboring, uh, neighboring uh, uh, alphabets, neighboring letters. It's very concise. 
to the particular alphabet. It is not going the left side more or right side. It's very managed, okay? And the Biram also like the same as we uh, do in the Devanagari style of Biram, okay? And this is the <clears throat> thing. And then I just want to, okay. Now come to this uh, palm leaf manuscript. It is a little bit cursive compared to the inscriptions I showed you. And also we can have some uh, literature here, like the text, like the numerous Sanskrit man manuscripts uh, written in Nandinagari have discovered, uh, discovered in South India and also different personal repository and uh, personal uh, and also institutional, okay? So you can see there is Aghora Mantra, this Angala Mantra Dhyanam, and this Ananta Puja Katha and Amari Kalpa. So many uh, type of manuscripts are available, published also and unpublished. So this is a very short uh, presentation about the Nandinagari uh, script. So I will conclude today's presentation with this. And from tomorrow, we'll practice. But if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you. Sir, uh, can I ask one question? Ah, please. Uh, are there Ayurveda manuscripts are available in Nandi Nagari? Definitely. But don't ask me that name. I don't know. But that is, uh, there are many. Because there is a catalog, one can find uh, all the manuscripts. There is the Ayurveda manuscripts there. Thank you, sir. And many manuscripts still in uh, preserved in different repository. Still, there is no catalog. So, and the South Indian and the Ayurvedic also very strong tradition in Ayurveda in South India. So, definitely, there will be Nandinagari. Uh, Script manuscript in the Ayurveda. So with this Siddham platform, we can prepare catalog also. The work of yes, actually, catalog yes. is a, such a huge work. Yes, yes. We can do that also. It will be a very good opportunity for all of us to prepare some unpublished um, uh, manuscript catalog in a descriptive manuscript catalog. Any other questions? Can you hear me, all my dear participants? Yes, sir, we can hear you. So, Guruji, we can hear you. No question. Yes, please. Hello. Well, it's very clear. Thank you. Okay, well, very clear. Okay. <laughs> okay, then uh, tomorrow we will start with learning the alphabets. And I will give you time to time some uh, like handouts. And we have to practice more and more. So tomorrow I'm going to start the alphabets. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Thank okay, you. then. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Thank and you. please Pranam, join, sir. please join timely thank you, sir. so that we can Pranam, start sir. exactly seven. Thank you, Pranam. Namaskar. Namo Pranam, sir. Thank you, sir. Pranam, sir. Pranam, sir. Pranam, sir. Pranam, sir. Pranam, sir. Thank you. Thank you.